So today we're going to be looking at this car power technology 15 volt DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volts in and kicks out 5 volts up to 3 amps. Now we're going to test 3 amps, but we're also going to look at the efficiency of the module. Now we can sort of guess that it'll probably be around 80%, but I thought we would graph it out. So I'm going to record it at these various different points and then I'll do a little graph in like Google Sheets or something. So I've got a couple of multimeters here. I've got a power supply. That's going to tell me the, vol the volts going in. We're going to make sure it's 12 volts. It'll be uh, voltage limited. Um, and we're going to measure the amps from the power supply. I won't measure it before it goes into the module. We're just going to trust that my power supply is reasonably accurate. We're going to measure the voltage out and also the amp amps out there, the current out rather, and then we're going to calculate the efficiency. Now we can calculate efficiency. Um, hopefully I'll be able to draw this correctly and I don't get it wrong, but I know you guys will enjoy correcting me if I am wrong. So first we need to figure out what the watts are and we can do that with volts, that's volts, volts times the amps. That gives us watts. Um, and then efficiency, efficiency um, equals the power out uh, divided by power in. So an example would be, let's assume that our power supply is 90% efficient at a certain point. So let's just go with uh, what's 90%. Okay, I can't do it exactly, but I can do it roughly in my head. So 12 volts uh, times, so this is the input stage, 12 volts times 0 0.9 amps uh, calculator. So <laughs> someone didn't like the calculator that I used in my last video. So I'm going to use this one. This is an LCD calculator. And it's from when I went to school. You can see where I scratched my name in there. So this is the calculator. So we're going to do um, 12 times 0. Point, oh, that's not point. 12 times 0. 0.9 equals 10.8 watts. So let's put that in 10.8 watts. And then let's say that our output is 5 volts. This is total rough calculation stuff. I don't know what it would be for 90, but we're going to go with 2 amps. That's roughly 90. Oh, that should have been... I don't know, actually. 2 amps equals uh, 10 watts, isn't it? 10 watts. So now we just need to divide 10 by 10.8. So 10 watts divided by 10.8 watts equals 0 0.9259. So that's 92.59%. Uh, so that would be a 92% uh, efficiency power supply conversion. Some of that will be burned off in the circuit, obviously. So you're missing, in fact, we can, so we've got uh, 10.8 minus 10 equals 0 0.8 watts being used up in the circuit. So that might just be expelled as heat or whatever. Uh, but that is the efficiency of that circuit, if that were to exist. So we're going to do that for all of these different ranges. So let's get it all set up. So we've got a bit of a janky setup going on, and I shall tell you why. Uh, the USB cable on the end of the CPT module was broken. There's a pin missing on the ground line, so it didn't work. And it took me a while to figure that out. I thought there was something going wrong with the cables or with the power supply, but no, it was that. Um, so we've got a little adjustable load, which we're going to be using. I've wired on um, some bits on the bottom side so that we're feeding power in from the pads on the bottom. We've also got one of these um, little uh, loads that's just a 10 watt resistor or two 10 watt resistors. So you can switch it from one amp to two amp. Not quite sure how accurate those resistors are. Um, 
and to mitigate the loss running through my meter because there will be a voltage drop associated with it and we can demonstrate that now. So 4.98, if I switch over to the voltage coming out of the Unity, oh, we don't see a massive drop yet, but that will, the drop will increase the higher load we go. In fact, I can just demonstrate that very quickly. So you can see it starts to drop here. So 4.90 on the output of our multimeter at 500 milliamps, but on the input, we're looking at 4.96. So we are getting a loss through the uh, multimeter. So we're gonna be measuring on the input side. No, sorry, on the, yeah, on the input side. Um, so we're, we're just imagining it without the loss of the multimeter. So let's bring this back down. So we're at 92 milliamps. Um, we're gonna push it up to 100. If I can do it very slowly. So in fact, while we're doing this, I can talk about the voltage here. We're looking at 4.99, so five volts bang on, on the output here. And I need it for a Raspberry Pi. So we need to be pretty close to its recommended voltage because um, 4.7, I think 4.75 is the minimum that we can really get away with. Oops, okay, so this thing's a bit sensitive, so we've just jumped over. Oh, can I do it? Tongue at the right angle, that is close enough. Let's call that 100 milliamps. In fact, we won't call it 100 milliamps. We'll call it 102 milliamps. And our voltage is at 4.98 volts. And the amps going in are 0 0.053. I should have written this as, uh, as that actually. So 0 0.102 amps. Let's just keep it fair, shall we? Let's jump up to the next range, which I wanted to be 500 milliamps. So let's just jump up to that. Close. You probably hear the whine of my power supply in the background. 501. Oh my God, look at that. Yes. So this is 0. Oh. 499 amps and our voltage is at 4.95 that is on the input side remember and the 12 volt power supply is reading 0 0.229 amps now let's jump up to one amp i'm not sure how far i can go with this um, adjustable load it might only be a two amp load and i wanted to go up to the three amps but that's why I have this thing here, so we can add on 10 more watts, or 20 watts, in fact. Oh, actually, we want to go to 1.1 1. 1 amp. Yeah, it was 1 amp. Bang on, 1 amp. I'm going to write that down before it changes. We're at 4.91. I'm going to ignore that. And the input is on 0 0.464 amps. Now let's go up to the next range, which was 125. Wow, look at that, 125, 1 1.249 amps. And the input is on 4. Eight, nine, and the power supply is at 0 0.584 amps. Next range was 1.5, so let's see if we can get there. I'm gonna say that 4.75 is the minimum voltage I'm prepared to accept. In fact, it's probably a bit too low. So 1.501 amps and our input is 0 0.709. We're, clamp we're keeping that voltage at 12 volts for the input, remember, and our voltage is 4.87. So we're not dropping an awful lot. We've dropped, what, 10 millivolts? 
Uh, next is two amps. Let's see if we can get there. That might be the limit for this adjustable power supply. No, it seems to want to go up more than that. Let's bring it back down to two. 2.02, 2.002 amps at 4.83 volts. And the input is at 0 0.967 amps. Next range, 2.5, can we get there? Yeah, okay. So 2.501. Oh, let's make that a zero. And then 4.79 volts. And the input is at 1.237 amps. Now, three amps. So this uh, module apparently has overcurrent protection. So we'll see if that kicks in. Almost there. 2.9 nine three oh we've gone over so we're on three three amps at 4.74 that's below the voltage threshold i'm prepared to go with the raspberry pi our input is at 1.524 so if i were drawing a graph where i wanted to say it this is its efficiency at five volts I couldn't do it because it, at no point has it kicked out five volts even if we drop this all the way back let's go all the way back you can hear this fan ramping up higher as the voltage increases so all the way back pulling 90 milliamps and we see 4.99 on the display that is bang on the input so a little bit of a five volts there. We can actually test it with another multimeter. I have a little, a little terrible one here that I kind of like to keep around. Uh, so where's my ground? Ground is there. And there's our input, five volts. Okay, so let's say 4.99 is five. It's within um, those two figures, 4.99, whatever. So let's work out the efficiency of it up to three amps. So just in case anyone asks, because you might do, uh, the little CPT was plugged directly into my power supply. So not through any crocodile clips, I literally screwed it into the terminals um, to avoid any kind of losses there. So the losses only exist really inside the wires itself. Now let's figure out what the efficiency was over these ranges, not for any particular reason. I did want to just check out what the voltage would be at these various ranges and whether it's suitable for my project. And it probably is, two amps is probably going to be enough, but I am going to be drawing 12 volts from the wall to run the bell as well. So we'll have to kind of find out which power supply we're going to use. So this one will give us a one amp 12 volt power supply will give us two amps out at 4.83, which is probably okay. But let's figure out these um, the efficiency over here. So we need to figure out what the watts are first. So let's do that one here. So that is, uh, oh, we have to start with the 12 volt line and then do the five volt. I don't know if I've got the space. So watts is volts times amps, so it's 12 times, put this on a flat surface, 0.053. Uh, so that's 0 0.6 watts. And then we've got 12, I'll spare you this. I'll go through them and then we'll look at it afterwards. So I've worked out the efficiencies with a little mistake there that I've corrected. <laughs> but we've got the, uh, so this is the uh, power in this is the power out and this is the efficiency and just for reference that is the current that's coming out um, so let's just do one so you can see that i've done them i guess so let's uh, let's work it out what it would be for 1.5 amps the one where i made a mistake so let's do that uh, so we look at the power out 7.309 and divide it by 8.508 and that gives us 
85.9%, 85.9%. That's the efficiency. Um, and so you can see that our peak efficiency is at one amp. Uh, so that was 4.91, 4.91 divided by 5.568, giving us 88.18% efficiency. Um, so you can see that it's got a little curve to it there. So it starts off low, it goes up, and then it comes back down again. So we've got like a, is that called a bell curve? Something like that. Um, so yeah, we've got an efficiency marking here. So we've got a range of three. So let's divide this into three, shall we? So we know that it reaches uh, at about a third of the way, it's reaching its peak efficiency. In fact, I should draw it again in three parts, shouldn't I? So we've got uh, three sections here, one, two, three. Uh, so we start off fairly low here and then one third of the way in at one amp. So let's say one amp, zero amps, two amps and three amps. Um, we've gone shot right up to our, our peak just there. And then we're coming back down. So if we mark that as 88% efficiency, this is zero down here. We're not actually going that much further down. We're just slowly, we're sort of on a peak here, 1.25, we're at 87, down here 85. So all the way to two amps, we're only losing like a tiny amount. We're getting to about there. And then at two amps to three amps, we're dropping a fair amount further. So we're just coming down here. So not a bell curve at all. In fact, it's a, it's a slope up like that. In fact, uh, it's not even that. It's, it's about that, isn't it? So get rid of that line. Uh, just a little bit of inefficiency at the start and at the end. And about one amp is where we peak. Okay, well, that's been a little look at the CPT module. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you fancy picking one up. I'm a little bit disappointed by the voltage coming out of it. I mean, it was fairly low, but I'll test it out with a Raspberry Pi and fingers crossed it will work. I don't know how I'm going to do that now that the connector didn't work. I guess I'll just have to wire directly onto the pins on the board, I guess. All right, I'll speak to you all soon.